Hi, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm Kaya Swift. I'm the marketing director here at Heller Consulting. Today's presentation is moving on from Razor's Edge, fundraising with Mission CRM on Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit. Before we get started, I'll cover a few housekeeping items. All of your lines have been muted, so if you have a question, please drop it in the question box. I will be monitoring that throughout today's session, and we will ask those questions at the end of today's presentation. Today's webinar will run until 2 p.m. Eastern time, and a recording will be sent to you tomorrow. And with that, it's my pleasure to introduce our two speakers today. We are joined by Tommy Spann, who is the Director of Business Development for Mission CRM. Tommy, welcome, thank you for being here. And could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and a little bit more about Mission CRM? Yeah, thank you, Kaya, and thanks, Jeff, for having me here. I'm really excited to talk to everybody and share all the goodness that is coming from the Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit and what we're doing. Um, I have been working with nonprofits and donor management, CRM functionality for about 20 something years. I often joke that I'm a mile deep and an inch wide. This is about all I do, this is all I know, right? So I've worked with organizations across the whole spectrum of different technologies, different size organizations, different sub-segments of nonprofits. And I just love talking to organizations and helping them find the right technology solutions to meet their needs. So I'm really thrilled to be here and just to share what we're doing and to talk with you guys about some alternatives to the razor's edge. Cool. A little bit about mission and who we are. So uh, I think it's just important to understand Mission Serum is a product company. We have built an application and we're going to talk more about this later about, you know, how it's built in the Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofits. But we're a product company first. Um, we also implement our solution and we are only working with nonprofits. So that little statement here on the slide it really speaks to what we do. We are, exist to accelerate the momentum of our nonprofit organizations. We're also the co-builders of the fundraising and engagement solution that is now a Microsoft product. So we know that product better than anybody because we actually built it with them. So we're really proud of what Microsoft is doing for the nonprofit industry and excited to help out. And as I mentioned, this is all we do. At Mission Serum, we only work with nonprofits. We only work with the Dynamics 365 and Microsoft technology, and we're real experts in this donor engagement and fundraising lifecycle that so many organizations are working on. So that's who we are and what we do, and I'm excited to show you some stuff today. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tommy. I'm also joined today by my colleague, Jet Winders, who is the Director of Sales for Heller Consulting. Jet, thanks for being here, and I'm going to pass it over to you to kick off today's discussion. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Jet Winders, and uh, I've had the privilege of being uh, a frontline Razor's Edge uh, user in the past. Uh, I worked for a small arts organization for about eight years, and so I know um, ins and outs of that tool. And I've also had the privilege of working with nonprofits at several agencies that support nonprofits exclusively, helping them with fundraising, with uh, different campaigns and with uh, architecting their technology. And so I've really been able to see how folks are leveraging technology to uh, achieve their needs and, and excited to share some more with you today. Uh, here at Heller Consulting, I want to share just a little bit uh, about the organization. Uh, we've been around for over 25 years and really our core expertise is in understanding nonprofit business practices and then going out to the marketplace and helping our clients identify, you know, what technology is going to help them achieve those needs. Um, we work with organizations across the U.S. and Canada and, and only work with nonprofits. So uh, this is really the core of what we do. We work with organizations in three different ways. Uh, the first is through a uh, uh, technology agnostic strategic practice. And so that allows us to really, you know, give our clients the best possible advice and go out to the market and say, what is gonna help our clients do what they need to do? And, and so that's why it's so exciting to see uh, tools and solutions like Mission CRM filling those needs. Um, and then uh, for so many of those solutions, we're able to stay on uh, with our clients, uh, with our design and implementation practice. Kai, you can move to the next slide here. Um, 
to help clients put those solutions into place. And so uh, that's another core pillar of, of the work that we do here at Heller. And then the last is in change management. And that's really in recognition that we could turn on the best solutions for our clients tomorrow, but if their staff aren't trained to use them, don't understand how they're gonna get their day-to-day -day work done and, and why they need these tools to be successful, it won't be successful. So we recognize the people component of any technology uh, project. So for our agenda today, I'm going to share just a little bit about, you know, what we hear about Razor's Edge and, and when I talk to organizations, what they're thinking about, what they're challenged by and what the opportunity ahead is. Um, and then I want to share when Heller goes out and, and helps our clients select tools, you know, what do we see out there? How do we think about the marketplace and, and what do we find when we uh, embark on these engagements with our clients? Um, and then I'm really excited to get to our conversation with Tommy and the folks of, of Mission CRM to really understand how, you know, this solution is uh, helping organizations really fill those fundraising needs. And so I'm um, excited to, to hear from him and, and ask him some questions. So I'll start off with why are organizations using Razor's Edge in the first place? You know, uh, over and over, uh, I hear from folks, they're using Razor's Edge because it was there when they got started at the organization. You know, it has an incredible longevity in the marketplace. It's been around since 1981 and uh, has really for a long time been uh, the standard within uh, organizational development offices. And so uh, folks have built their development practices around the nomenclature and the naming and the way that the tool works. And so there's lots of folks within organizations that are comfortable using this tool. And, and, and in some ways that's a good thing. You know, folks were able to go to different development departments knew that they'd be using Razor's Edge and knew how to get work done. Um, and, you know, the good news is Razor's Edge has a really strong core competency in some of the traditional fundraising work that we need to do in managing campaigns and uh, being able to, you know, do our uh, direct response and our, our major giving uh, and work like that. It has our, our batch entry and, you know, different things like that that every development office needs. You know, it wouldn't have been around so long if it didn't do some things really well. We also know uh, that it's hard to make a change, that that takes time and planning and effort and folks need to do their, you know, day-to-day -day fundraising work. And so uh, for a lot of organizations, just making it work one more year, you know, what other, you know, deduplication or, you know, address changes or just a little more efficiency can we squeeze out of Razor's Edge, you know, instead of, you know, doing the deliberate effort to make the change. And so organizations are there. Um, but we also hear from organizations a lot of the pain points that start to spur them to that change and make them start to look around more broadly and say, is there anything out here uh, that can do better for us than what Razor's Edge can do? Um, you know, some of the big complaints are really just around the innovation within the product itself that, you know, as our fundraising has become more complex, as we're doing, you know, more multi-channel, more diversified fundraising, more creative types of campaigns and need to use new and different functionality, that the, the tool just hasn't kept up. Um, there's not as robust a roadmap uh, to address these new types of fundraising. And the tool itself doesn't give a lot of opportunities for customization. So um, if you're trying to do something new, you're kind of still stuck with the tool that you have. And, you know, maybe you can get Razor's Edge to, to do something in a slightly different way or hijack some fields that you wouldn't normally use. Um, but there's only so much you can do there. And because, you know, Razor's Edge isn't that customizable, it can be difficult to collaborate uh, with other departments and intake other types of information that you might want to use for segmentation. And so it has a really limiting factor in, in what you can use with it. Uh, I've addressed this a little already, but just that overall sophistication that, you know, the sense that it hasn't kept up with, you know, more modern and diversified ways of fundraising. Um, and part of that is the challenges with integration, that it in itself hasn't, um, you know, it's not easily integratable with a lot of particularly online fundraising types of tools and getting that type of data into the system can be really challenging. Uh, there's some user interface challenges. So, you know, even though folks are familiar with the tool, you know, sometimes they have to move back and forth into different screens and that even the upgrade to NXT actually created more challenges because you uh, can't do everything in that interface. Um, and then the last I'll 
reference is security. You know, that's something that as fundraisers, we don't want to think about every day. We kind of rely on the tools uh, to be secure and we really rely on our partner vendors to take care of that for us. But, you know, with the security breach back in 2020, that, you know, really forced a lot of organizations to confront whether or not the technology they're using is secure for their donors and if that information is secure. And so that's just something we want to have a lot of confidence in when we're, you know, using a tool set. So if those pain points have become strong enough, we can also think about them as opportunities, right? You know, what is the opportunity for you as an organization if, um, you know, you're challenged with a, a tool that, you know, isn't allowing you to do the types of fundraising strategies that you want? Well, what is the opportunity if you were to go out and find a tool that would empower you to do new and different types of fundraising strategies, allow you to communicate with donors the way you want to donate with them? And the great news is, you know, there's more and more options in the marketplace, which is really allowing organizations to find tools that are better fitting their needs and better allowing them to engage in the types of fundraising strategies that's the right mix for them and allowing them to raise more money. So I want to share how Heller thinks about that marketplace when we go out and survey it and the types of strategies we see organizations deploy when they adopt a CRM solution. Um, we call that our distinction between product versus a platform strategy. So, uh, and Razor's Edge, I'll put in that, you know, product category where, you know, it is a fixed tool, you know, out of the box, it does certain things or it doesn't do them. And, and there's other solutions like that um, where, you know, uh, there's a single vendor uh, that's built a proprietary solution and it kind of does what it does. And, you know, if you can find one that happens to do exactly what you need, sometimes those can be uh, good fits, but there are challenges because they often don't integrate well with other tools. You know, they perhaps you can only choose from the products that they make. There might be really limited opportunities to customize it. Um, and, you know, as your needs change, that can be a problem because the tool itself, its roadmap may or may not align with, you know, your changing fundraising needs. So you might have limited opportunities to uh, customize it to meet your needs. The other approach is a platform approach. And you can think about Salesforce and, and Microsoft as those platforms where uh, these partners are providing the underlying technology that is what the solution is being built on. So through a combination of, you know, purpose-built applications and integrations and other tools, you're able to build an ecosystem that's going to, you know, meet all of those fundraising needs. And so this strategy has a lot of flexibility, really unlocks the opportunity to work with a lot of different tools that might meet very specialized needs within a fundraising department. Um, but we also know challenges on a platform can be, you know, because you can customize it so much, you also have to take greater ownership over the system. And so there's often a, a more need for administration and, and, and things like that. I'm excited to hear from, from Tommy today because I think uh, what's really amazing about that product is uh, they've built on top of a platform and really in some ways uh, built some of the best of both worlds here. But we'll get to that more shortly. So I wanted to talk on Microsoft specifically and why that has been emerging as a really popular platform decision for the organizations that uh, we're working with. So, you know, five years ago, we would not have been saying this, you know, Salesforce would have been the platform that we were advising our, our organizations to work on. But what Microsoft has done uh, over the last few years is started to develop some real nonprofit focused solutions um, that are leveraging existing tools that many nonprofits are already using. So I'll show this uh, a little bit later, but essentially as they've been building their uh, nonprofit solutions, they're building on top of, you know, modern workplace tools and leveraging Power BI and SharePoint and those other tools that are already in um, many of our nonprofit clients. And so it, it's really creating a seamless experience in building up that technology stack and now adding fundraising uh, to the Microsoft suite that they're using. There's also finding some favorable licensing. Microsoft provides a uh, really good pricing for nonprofit organizations, which is making it really competitive, if not 
uh, a savings for, for many organizations. Microsoft is having a rapidly expanding ecosystem because it is such an established partner within technology more broadly. As it has made investments in the nonprofit space, many other partners are making similar investments. So we're seeing a rapid expansion in the types of tools and partners that are part of this ecosystem. And then, you know, again, because Microsoft has been around for so long, they really have some of the gold standard solutions around security and storage and data and analytics. And that is just an underlying benefit that is powering all of the solutions that they're putting forward. I wanted to show this snapshot uh, just briefly to sort of illustrate how they've built that nonprofit stack and leverage many of the tools that uh, organizations are already using. So the foundation is that nonprofit common data model, which is really aligning a single data structure. So we know the data is going to all work together. And then they're leveraging, again, tried and true Microsoft solutions and Azure and Dynamics 365, Power Apps, Modern Work, that's our word, and Excel and, and products like that. Power BI, powerful analytics tool, and then building on top of that their nonprofit solutions. So it's leveraging, uh, you know, these industry standard uh, platform solutions that are already in place. And so, as Heller has been working with their own organizations. Um, we take them through this roadmap methodology to help them identify what their needs are and ultimately select you know, what their fundraising solution should be. That starts with strategic discovery to interview uh, different team members within development departments, uh, understand what those requirements are and help the organization prioritize them both for what they're doing now and what they wanna do in the future and ultimately decide you know, what do you need as a development team out of your uh, technology, you know, what do you need it to accomplish? And more and more as part of those evaluation efforts, we're finding that Microsoft as a platform is meeting those needs and Mission CRM as a solution built on the Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofits uh, is really the right match for those clients. And so that's why I'm excited to be uh, hearing from Tommy today and from Mission CRM uh, to hear what they're doing and what their experience and the clients they're talking with. So Tommy, are you there to answer some questions for us? I am, I am. And I think my camera will come on in just a second, but um, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. We can hear you fine. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Well, how about we just start at the beginning and share a little bit about, you know, why build Mission CRM in the first place? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. And I think you hit on one of the important points a few minutes ago when you were talking about product versus platforms and how a product like the Razor's Edge is really good at gift processing. It's a you know mature product for that purpose but it has a fixed structure and it is on an island, you know, so to speak. And so we've seen so many different fundraising products follow that same pattern over the years. And when our founders started Mission CRM back in 2016, they identified this and they said, gosh, you know, Razor's Edge has been doing this for 30 something years at that point. Um, Salesforce had begun to develop its own solution, but Salesforce, and I came from the Salesforce world prior to uh, working with Mission CRM. Salesforce was really kind of like, how do we work around the architecture to make it apply to nonprofits? And so there were some decisions that had to be made that made it quite difficult in some ways for organizations to use Salesforce. And it's an amazing technology, but architecturally, it was kind of a workaround approach. And so what our founders did was just take a look at what are the feature functionalities of products like the Razor's Edge? What are some of the architectural challenges that we've seen at platforms like you know, Salesforce? And how do we leverage this fantastic technology stack that is Microsoft to build the better solution, right? How do we leverage those um, lessons learned, stand on the shoulders of those that have come before and build a solution that can truly align with the nonprofit common data model and meet the functional needs leveraging this technology. So that's really what inspired the, uh, the, the beginning of Mission CRM was to build a better solution on the world's best technology platform. 
That's great. You know, I shared um, a little bit about how when Heller starts talking with organizations, it's often at that pain point where, you know, they're frustrated with using Razor's Edge for some of the, the reasons I shared. Maybe you can talk a little bit about, you know, when clients are coming to you and they start speaking with you, what's been their journey up to that point and, and what types of conversations are you having with them? Yeah, there's a, a common pattern that we see a lot because organizations that have been using the Razor's Edge for you know, sometimes many years have just kind of reached that limit. And you talked about, you know, the fact that it is this product and it has its kind of fixed structure. They reach that limit where they say, we want our marketing solutions to be better integrated. We want to have our volunteer data integrated. We want to have you know, external systems integrated. Essentially, when they start using the word integrated, what they're really asking for is a true CRM solution. You know, they need a CRM that can provide a more holistic view of their constituents across all of the different touch points and engagements that they might have. So that is a common pattern that we see when organizations come to us. They're not saying that, you know, Razor's Edge doesn't meet this need or that need in, in terms of gift processing. It does a great job at that. What they're saying is, I need that gift processing functionality in a CRM. And so sometimes they come to us after they've already started developing a program solution on the Power Apps. Um, sometimes they come to us because they've begun to use Business Central for their finance or ERP. And they say, okay, now that I'm in this Microsoft world, I'm using SharePoint, I'm using the Office products, I'm using the Power Apps, I'm using you know, Azure, I'm using some of these other solutions. Is, is Mission CRM capable of meeting those gift processing needs that I've been so dependent upon within the Razor's Edge for so many years? And so that's a common pattern that we see. And those are the types of organizations that we love to talk to because we can really show them the power of what the CRM can do and how a mission can meet those gift processing needs for which Razor's Edge is so famous for. Yeah, I love how you sort of oriented us to, you know, gift processing being just one component of many things that a nonprofit has to get done. Um, you know, maybe you can dive into in some more detail, you know, why is Mission CRM an alternative to Razor's Edge specifically, but then, you know, how that's all working on that broader Microsoft platform? Yeah, happy to. I'll start with a slide and then we'll go into demo mode because I'm excited to show you guys some stuff to really help to illustrate this. But if, if Kai, if you could go to the next slide, I think it can help to illustrate this. Um, what we hear often, and as I mentioned, that common pattern is a nonprofit might say, okay, I've got Razor's Edge, yay, I can do my gift processing, I can do my donor management. Oh, but I need um, a finance system as well. And so we need to develop an integration or an export import process with a finance system. And then they say, but hold on, I need my online technologies as well for my website and I need donations and I need email marketing. And how am I gonna tie all of this together? And I'm gonna probably also need volunteer database. I'm gonna need, you know, event management and I want to enrich my data. And so what happens is over a pretty, you know, brief period, these organizations get to a point where suddenly they need middleware, right? They need, and Kai, you can advance, they need middleware to help them just keep all of this data kind of moving back and forth. And Omatic is a common middleware application that we hear from these organizations. And it's a great product, but now you have a nonprofit who is distracted from supporting their mission and raising more funds because they're not having to manage integration with this middleware. And so there's always limitations when you encounter that. And so whether it's you know trying to bring the volunteer data together with the program data and the finance, all of this, it's just a common state that we have organizations come to us in. And they often come to us with these RFPs with diagrams that look really similar to this. And on the Microsoft side, it really starts with this, um, Kai, you can advance. On the Microsoft side, you've got this power platform and this big blue box is basically illustrative of what Microsoft calls the dataverse, right? So you've got this one database, this platform, and you have Mission CRM as a product installed in this platform. So all of the goodness that Mission CRM 
brings is just added to this dataverse. It's just one database. There's no integration. It's just one database at this point. And Mission CRM is bringing the online donations, the event registration, event management, and all of those kind of fundraising development features that organizations are looking for. But that's what makes this so great is that outside of Mission CRM, but still in that same dataverse, you can create those program applications. There's the now Microsoft Volunteer Management product, which is fantastic. And we've had the privilege of implementing it for a couple of organizations. And it is an incredibly robust product that lives alongside Mission in the same database. And you have Microsoft's Dynamics Marketing product, which is a you know, very enterprise scale, robust email marketing automation tool with SMS and everything that again, lives in that same database. Donor Search is a third-party um, vendor that actually has um, wealth profiling information, and they've developed a solution inside of this dataverse. So the data lives right in there. And you have donor services where you can use like the, the, the typical you know, customer support tools, again, living in that dataverse. So these are just a few of the examples. I mean, that's what makes Microsoft sometimes so daunting is they have so many products, you know, and most of them all live in this same dataverse and then for those organizations using business central we've actually built a um, an api integration that pushes the data from the sub ledger in mission and kai i think there's one more build it pushes that data into business central right so now they have a full crm with this larger blue box representative um, appreciating my art skills are not the best but hopefully this tells a story and they're not having to build or work with middleware that's bringing all of these pretty common needs into one place. So let me actually show you some stuff. So Kai, if you'll give me screen control. Okay, let me show. All right, are you seeing dynamics, Jeff? Not seeing it yet, Tommy. Um, let's see. Showing. Are you seeing that now? No. It's just oh, shoot. You and it, me. Says, uh, it says I'm showing my screen. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Let's try. Uh, come on, go to. I can see it, Tommy. Um, okay. It like I see, see it, it now as well. Yep. Okay, great. All right, cool. Well, you know, it wouldn't be a webinar if we didn't have one little bit of <laughs> technical hiccup. Okay, so I've been talking about how you have this like full CRM approach and how you can see all the things in one place. So this is it. So what we're looking at is um, an example record. So it just happens to be, you know, my example record as a, a donor inside of the database. Now I am in the mission CRM product, which is called Mission CRM Advanced. But if I click on this little app menu, you can see that I have other applications. And so think of that big blue box that I showed a minute ago where I've got marketing, I've got customer service, I've got portal, I've got volunteer management, all right here. Or I could have my own custom program databases all right here in one place. And so you're looking at a pretty common just contact management set, but I've got a lot of donor data kind of built in here i can see that he is a member of household i can see which company he's associated with i can see all of the connections or relationships i've got a detailed timeline that shows every interaction whether that be email or task related or receipts that have been delivered so i have a full picture of him i've got a moves management business process flow that can be tailored to each organization's process what's important to them is they're tracking and moving individuals along that kind of journey and of course i've got your common information i've got all the different calculated fields about this individual so that i can do the types of segmentation i need to find those donors but i've also got here volunteer data i can see that how many hours he's volunteered how many engagements a volunteer he's participated in and i have all this great information in one place i can jump down into his detailed giving data right? 
So in the Microsoft common data model, a transaction is that atomic level, right? It's the individual payment where I can get all the details and I can see that here he's made a soft credit or he's you know, credited for that particular gift, but he's had several um, hard credits. I could go into all of his particular gifts. I could see where those gifts are being designated and what campaigns, appeals, and packages have helped solicit it. I can't get into the full depth of mission CRM in a, a few minutes of a demonstration, but just suffice it to say, this is a robust donor fundraising management solution. Donor commitments or the pledges where I can keep track of those multi-year pledges, multiple different payments, those commitments that I'm gonna be tracking towards payment schedules. So payment schedules are those recurring gifts. So, you know, where you've got somebody that says, I wanna give you $25 every month in perpetuity until I tell you to stop. And we are PCI level compliant. And so we work with the payment gateways where we take control of that subscription, that recurring process. And we process it on that monthly basis or whatever period that the individual donor has requested. And then we just send that request over to the payment gateway and get back the token showing that it was successful. And so it's a set it and forget it type of revenue stream for most organizations which is really important that they're not having to do all of the batching. They're not having to manually deal with credit cards and all the security implications of that. And they can trust that this is totally secure because it's in the Microsoft cloud working directly with the payment gateways and mission CRM and your organization never sees the credit cards, never touches it, right? And I've got development tasks where I'm keeping track of different opportunities for like a major gift all in one place or where this individual want might be a solicitor. So a lot of common and just very important gift processing, gift management needs. But again, I can see his volunteer engagements that he's been, uh, he's scheduled to participate in an upcoming volunteer engagement um, for this fictitious museum for 16 hours. And I can see the qualifications for his volunteer activity. That volunteer management product, which we could fill a full three hours of demonstration is a very robust tool for volunteer management for onboarding and all of the approvals and qualification needs as, as every organization requires. And then again, marketing. Marketing is in here. Now, apologies, this is a, a demonstration environment and I can't actually send marketing emails out <laughs> for good reason, but this is where I would be able to see all of those email interactions, all the events, all the marketing forums, all the opens that this individual has had over periods of time. I have all of this analytics, all of this data in one place. I'm not having to jump from application to application. Now, I might have some rules that you know prohibit certain staff from doing certain things. And of course, Microsoft has excellent security layer and, and security profiles. But and so some of my team members might only function in the marketing app or might only function in the mission app. But the point that I wanted to just show is how all of this data is right here in one place, right? And of course, as we talked about, you know, give processing is critical um, to organizations coming from the razor's edge. So here's just an example of the batch gift uh, entry tool. So being able to set those batch defaults, being able to batch those gifts, put your mouse aside and just use your keyboard to capture all those gifts and process them. One of the most significant features of what Mission does is in structuring all of those gifts to support your general ledger journal entries, right? So for your finance system. And so we're going to create the debit and credit records for every single transaction based upon that fund that you've designated them to aligned with the general ledger account codes that you need. And we could spend a lot of time talking about that. And it's a depth of the mission CRM product in regards to all of this uh, designation management, GL distributions, designation batches, all of those kind of critical things that organizations really need as a part of their gift processing so that they aren't spending too much time kind of managing all of the details of the ins and outs of the data. They can focus on the fundraising, right? And he talked about how the platform and Microsoft leverage a lot of the um, uh, kind of native modern work tools. And that's a really good example. Like here in Teams, 
right? So I'm in teams and I can have different teams that are for maybe my development team and I'm pulling the data in, right? So Dataverse is not just about dynamics and marketing and volunteers, it's about teams, you know, it's about Excel. And so bringing all of this data into one place where I can actually take a look at an opportunity from in teams, I can collaborate with my coworkers, I can share these records, we can work on a meeting together and share our screens, we can jump over into dynamics, I can get access to all of these applications, you know, at my fingertips and have that data integrated. So that it really provides a lot of utility without a lot of integration and middleware that can get in the way for a nonprofit. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see the conceptual blue box of it being a single database. You know, it brought to life when you actually see the products and how you're able to move from different pieces of functionality, but it's all leveraging the same data. Um, and you're not having to build an integration every time you want to do that. Um, and, you know, with our clients, data is so critical and surfacing that to the right people at the right time so that they can make good decisions, do their work, it is so critical. Maybe you can share, and I've certainly seen some already, just about how does mission do that? You know, how do users actually see it as they're working? Yeah, I mean, so the Teams is a good example of how they can really kind of see the data and interact with it in the kind of native applications that they're using on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but obviously, every organization that is performing any level of fundraising is having to do segmentation of some form or another. Most organizations are doing segmentation where it's just, you know, establishing a set of criteria and finding all the records that meet that criteria. And some organizations get into very sophisticated, you know, cube-based RFM segmentation. And if you're gonna have the aspirations to get into that sophisticated segmentation, you have to have the data structure that allows you to do so. And so if we take a look at some more simple segmentations, here's like a live on query. So this is, again, is a feature that is a core Dynamics feature called Marketing List. It's used by the Dynamics marketing product. It is used within the mission product. It is ubiquitous, right? It is not something that is exclusive to any of the one application, but it allows for the organizations to really query their data and find those records that they need. Um, and this is where I get pretty excited thinking about how Microsoft's big investment in AI is gonna start to surface. And I know I participated in a webinar not too long ago from Microsoft, from Microsoft Partners, where they were showing some of the work they're doing in AI. And you know, unless you're under a rock, you've heard about G chat GBT and what they're doing with that. And it's really exciting to see like natural language queries start to build into the application. I can't wait to see that come into here. But you know, for now, we have to use a little bit more of our brain power um, to develop these queries, but you know, here's just an example one of, I've got all of that data, whether it's marketing data, volunteer data, constituent data, gift data, all right in one place that I can use to identify and segment uh, all of the constituents, whatever criteria that I want. So I can look for like last year's giving tools, but I can add those related entities and I can go into any of the different related entities that are in that particular data verse and find any of those individuals that meet that criteria. So I can save these views or I can use existing views. A save view is basically just another term for a query. And so I can save this, I can export it, I can model it, I can do all kinds of stuff with it. So I really think that the power of this dataverse really shows up when you're talking about the kind of query of the data and how you can use that data in a variety of ways. Um, sorry, I just had another thought. <laughs> you know, I think another way to really show it is when, and, and especially like how this works with the modern office products. Like if I'm looking at, in this case, a, a list of opportunities. So these are, individuals that I'm hoping to solicit for like a major gift. One of the really cool features and how they work with the Microsoft products is that I can actually make modifications to this data using Excel. So I'm not having to export, manipulate and import. I can actually modify it right here 
modify these ask amounts, you know, change the dates on when I perceive to win these major gifts and click save and it's going to save that data directly back in the database. So, you know, organizations, no matter how sophisticated you are, kind of need that simplicity of data manipulation, data query, data management without having to learn a whole lot of new tools, right? So I think it really is just a, another good illustration of how they can bring the power together. Tommy, um, I've had the privilege yeah. of seeing the tool in action, and I'll be honest, that example of popping out Excel and making an edit uh, in that format and having it you know, come right back into the database is one of my favorites for, for that exact reason. It's so intuitive of, of how valuable being able to do that would be rather than, you know, the millions of times I've had to export something to Excel, make up things right? and figure the, out how the, to import it. The small it but mighty features, you know what I mean? It's like we, we look for moments in every day that we can find efficiency and like remove friction. And that's just a really good example right there. Um, I, I thought I would just, uh, Oh, I think you're going to ask another question about, um, well, I was just going to show some of the like additional ways that we provide that value to these organizations by bringing to them these reports and analytics, you know, again, taking advantage of what Microsoft is bringing in this technology with like Power BI. When we uh, implement Mission Serum for organizations, we implement like 30 different Power BI reports that they're able to really slice and dice the data and get more information about all of their um, different individual donors and what they're interested in, or maybe that they're, they're looking at the major gifts and they're looking at pipeline and you can drill down into these things. So there's just a ton of information that we're able to leverage those tools. And we, we give these um, uh, reports to the nonprofits, and then they can make further modifications. They can clone them, kind of build from them. So it really gives them a lot of utility of their data right out of the box. That's great. Yeah, I think I'm about to pull you out of the demonstration. Any last okay. things you'd like us to see before we go on? Um, you know, just the integration of, of online giving. Uh, the, this is one of our clients, Food Banks Canada, and this is one of their Mission Serum Power donation pages. Team Rubicon is another one of our, our clients. We're very proud of all the work that they're doing, supporting all the people that have been affected by the tornadoes. And this is, you know, their donation page, Action Against Hunger. And then, you know, this these are Mission Serum Power pages that are bringing that data directly into that database without the need of integration, without the, all of the headaches that can come from that. And it just really helps organizations leverage the technology and focus on their fundraising. That's great. I appreciate you giving us a, a chance to see the product in action and uh, yeah, go from the theoretical blue box to actually seeing the, the solution. Um, you know, I mentioned in, you know, why Microsoft is becoming, uh, you know, a a strong option for our clients and for nonprofits uh, is that, you know, licensing pricing and, and the favorability of it. And I know you've, you know, committed to extending that to your clients as well. Maybe you can share just a bit about how you're scaling to fit both small and large organizations. Yeah, it, it really starts with what Microsoft has done and the way that they've structured this to support organizations of different sizes. So I think you can go to the next slide. Kaya, um, because what they've really done is made it so that organizations of any size can really grow and scale. So if you're a qualified nonprofit, you're going to get five licenses of Dynamics Sales Enterprise um, for free. It's a grant, right? And so you get those five licenses and the mission license is an enterprise license, right? So we're not going to grow with the users. You're going to uh, purchase additional users from either Microsoft directly or um, uh, um, TechSoup or your licensing partner to help you grow as your staff grows. But then the, the mission solution is going to be agnostic of those users, right? And another thing with this chart that is showing here is one of the beauties of the mission serum solution and what Microsoft has done is that we get to leverage the power of Azure. And so Azure has this infinite scale, right? So organizations 
uh, will get an Azure subscription and then they choose that kind of pay-as-you-go model. So they're not overbuying. They're not buying like virtual machines and servers that are going to far exceed their needs. They can let it grow up and down as they need. And so the way that the mission system works is those online pages, when uh, you promote those online pages, they're hosted by Azure. And all of the traffic and all of the donations first are put into Azure. So it will scale. So if you get that big moment where suddenly you're collecting tens of thousands of online donations, you're not having to worry about the infrastructure impact because it's this Azure scale in their pay-as-you-go model um, for subscriptions, which is heavily discounted for nonprofits, allows you to grow and allows you to not lose sleep worrying that your server or your host is going to choke under the pressure or under the weight or that you're going to be overbuying, right? So that I think is a really good way that Microsoft has structured this and we've adopted it to allow organizations of all sizes to really adopt the technology affordably. Great. Um, you know, one of the things that I think is kind of conceptually challenging, especially if you've only been familiar with Razor's Edge for a long time, is a solution like Mission CRM, which is a full fundraising solution, but built on a platform like Microsoft that still gives you a lot of flexibility and ability to customize. You don't lose any of that benefits of the platform either. Um, maybe for my last question, you can just talk us through that value of Mission CRM with Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit, how that works together, you know, from your perspective. Yeah, for sure. So we can jump to the next slide. And this is a little bit of a build, but it really starts with that Power Platform. And so Microsoft is the vendor of the Power Platform, right? Not Mission. And this is an incredibly robust platform. It's where Microsoft is putting all of their investment. And so we're seeing tons and tons of innovation around this power platform. And it is a, a fantastic, very easy to manage um, platform for adding fields and changing the user interface and creating custom applications to support your programs. And we take nothing out of that when it comes to mission. We're just building on top of it, right? So you can go to the next slide, Kaya. And the way that Microsoft has really structured this is that fundraising and engagement product that, that we built in collaboration with Microsoft a few years ago is then a solution. It's an application installed on the Power Platform. So it brings with it some additional uh, um, entities and fields that are aligned with that nonprofit common data model. Again, taking nothing away from that uh, power platform, but bringing that core infrastructure, that core structure that nonprofits need for the gift management. But then fundraising engagement only goes so far by design. So that's where Mission CRM comes in. And Mission is dependent upon that fundraising engagement architecture. We're building on top of it. So as Microsoft continues to innovate and make improvements to the power platform and the fundraising engagement product, the Mission Serum clients benefit from that. And so you've got all of the gift processing functionality that is built in the mission, the online donations, the designation subledger for ERP integrations, and all of the functionality for receding and all of the peer-to-peer, -peer, everything that mission provides that we're taking nothing away from that power platform. And as we saw briefly, you're getting the volunteer management applications, you're getting the marketing, uh, Dynamics marketing applications, if you choose that, and anything else, again, built on this platform. So it really comes full circle as to what you started with, Jet, where you're talking about products versus platforms, right? Mission is a product. Mission is a product, but it is built on the platform, leveraging everything that Microsoft has provided. And without using the, the dreaded term integration, right, we are a part of this dataverse so you get the benefit of Microsoft Teams, you get the benefit of Excel, you get the benefit of all of these methods by which the data comes together without taking anything away. So that I think is one of the most compelling value propositions that Microsoft has provided and we're excited to be a part of it. 
Um, yeah, so I, I mentioned this, but it's just a part of this larger uh, model that Microsoft is providing. So that constituent management, you know, these are just one piece of what Microsoft is developing and the security. Um, and I, as I mentioned briefly, I'm really excited to see what the AI stuff is going to uh, bring to nonprofits because we're already beginning to see how that AI is integrated with Microsoft Outlook. And so for major gift officers, using the Viva application and getting that insight directly is really cool. And so I'm excited to see what the co-pilot applications that Microsoft are rolling out in time are gonna bring, because this all benefits organizations. And so, you know, we have to be smart about how we use it for sure, and we're all learning, but I think this larger platform that Microsoft is providing is just gonna continue to grow and, and provide more benefit. Yeah, thank you for, talking us through all that tommy and i i think uh to your point on ai and it's true for so many other new innovations that'll be coming down the line as microsoft makes those investments and those innovations for all its clients across all of their technology stack it's going to roll up and benefit folks on this solution because they benefit from the innovation and the rest of the technology, but then still have the specialized fundraising, gift processing functionality that's within mission. So with that, uh, I believe I'll be turning it back to Kaya for some questions. Thank you, Jet and Tommy. This has been fantastic. Um, before I dive into all of the wonderful questions that you have been sending. We have a lot coming in and we had a lot coming in before the webinar today. So uh, we might not get to all of them, um, but I will do my best here. Before we dive into those, I'm gonna do a quick plug of more information. If you uh, wanna hear more about the Microsoft ecosystem and technology strategy, I encourage you to visit our website at teamheller.com. We have a lot of guides and resources, webinars like this. Um, that go deeper into technology strategy and Microsoft specifically. And then of course, if you would like to learn more about Mission CRM, you can visit missioncrm.ca. And then I'll also say if anyone is gonna be in Denver next month for the Nonprofit Technology Conference, all three of us will be there in person. Um, and we have a booth that Hel uh, Heller Consulting is hosting a booth. So if you're in Denver, um, please pop by and say hello to us. We would love to see you. But uh, with that, I'll go back to the questions. So Tommy, I'll start with you. We have several questions talking about um, how do you migrate from Razor's Edge to Mission Serum? So any advice or you know, are there tools out there or processes or things that you can advise organizations on? Um, yeah. Yeah. It I, I've been involved in literally hundreds of migrations from Razor's Edge over the years, and it's a complex relational database. Fortunately, it's a SQL-based database. So it does require, in my experience, um, some sophistication of SQL coding to be successful in a true migration. So with Mission CRM, we have we provide data migration services, and we've actually because we've done it so many times with Razor's Edge, we've built some scripts that we can just reuse and we're not having to start from scratch. And then we're just tailoring it to manage these specific attributes you know, that each organization might have in the Razor's Edge. Um, but our goal, and I really believe everybody's goal should be, when we move your data, whether it be from the Razor's Edge or DonorPerfect or eTapestry or Oracle or whatever it is, we want it to live in Mission CRM as if it were created in Mission CRM. So I would be very wary of anyone that gives you a template and says, fill this out, right? Or I would be very wary of any method that is just going to dump the data in as some sort of like legacy structure that doesn't provide the utility like we show today. So there's no um, magic wand for this approach. It is laborious. So I would choose a partner uh, if it's not us or the Heller team that really understands the value and the importance and the technical acumen to properly migrate your data. Wonderful, thank you, Tommy. Um, I have another one about, uh, does Mission require Office 365 to run? No, so um, Mission is an application in the Dynamics 365 technology on that power platform, but you could, 
continue to use Google Apps or whatever you want alongside of it. It does not require the modern office, which is what Microsoft calls it. Um, I will say that I believe you can start to get some discounts on licensing when you bundle, right? So that might be something to consider over time, but it is not a requirement. Thank you. Uh, I'll give you a quick break, Tommy, and I'll go to Jet. So Jet, uh, we had a question about how does Mission CRM compare to Salesforce? Um, we also had a question about, you know, BlackBot is the incumbent for the nonprofit space, and what response do you have for those who talk with their peers and they're still using BlackBot? So I think this is just a general kind of marketplace question that I would like to pose to you. Yeah, well, I'll start with the razor's edge sort of question. Um, the answer is, uh, for some organizations, it still works for them. You know, I typically find those are organizations that are still in somewhat siloed organizations. They're not sharing data. Perhaps they haven't done a lot in uh, digital fundraising or event fundraising yet. And so, you know, if it's still working and, you know, you haven't felt the need beyond Razor's Edge, perhaps that's still a, a strong system for the organization. Um, but when it's, you know, when your fundraising needs have sort of outgrown the system, that's when we look to those platforms like Salesforce and Microsoft. What I always try to orient our clients to um, is to do apples to apples comparison. So when you say Salesforce versus Mission CRM, I actually don't think of it like that. It's Salesforce as a platform compared to Microsoft as the platform and looking at that underlying technology and then look at what functionality is available on top of that platform to meet your you know sort of specific development department needs and so for salesforce for a long time that has been salesforce npsp um, that in itself is not a hundred percent solution for development departments it requires customization and build out to you know meet even parity with razor's edge um, and I would say that's somewhat similar with fundraising and engagement on uh, Microsoft uh, Cloud for Nonprofits. And so what Mission is doing is building out that those additional missing pieces so you don't have to. And so it speeds up your ability to have a 100% solution. And so that's sort of the way I think about it as, as how you want to compare. Thank you, Jet. Tommy, uh, back to you. We had a couple questions about specific aspects of um, donor applications. So somebody was asking about membership tracking, somebody else was asking about just general donor portal applications, events, calendar, event registration. If you could give some more details about uh, how all of that integrates with Mission CRM. Yeah, it's it's probably a longer answer than I have time today, but I'll, I will say that, so Mission provides online donations, so there is no need to get a separate application Mission provides event registration, so there is no need to get a separate event management product. It is all built in. However, we play nicely with others, right? And so should your organization decide, I really want to use this third-party solution for events or peer-to-peer -peer or whatever that is, that's okay. That's cool. We actually have a model for that that allows you to bring that data into Mission, right? So we talk about the benefit of the Dataverse mitigating this need for integrations, but there's still going to be some organizations that have uh, a preference to use third-party products and to bring that data in. And so there's a, an amazing array of options to really simplify those types of integrations without necessarily requiring middleware applications. So we could talk more specifics. Um, one-on-one, uh, but Microsoft provides a portal solution, which is awesome. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we've got online donations, event registrations, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, crowd, uh, crowdsource fundraising tools built into Mission. Fantastic. Well, I know we are just at about time here. Um, for those of you that did not get your questions answered, uh, I will be sending a follow-up email with this recording and the slides and um, some ways to get in touch with Jet and Tommy if you have uh, individual questions. I know there were some questions about costs, which Tommy, you did touch on a little bit, but if you wanna go deeper with that, um, you could reach out to them. Um, well, I appreciate you all being here. Um, thank you all for your wonderful questions and thank you, Jet and Tommy. Thanks, Kaya. Thank Thanks everybody. everybody.
love to meet with you one on one and talk more. Um, thanks, Jeff. Always good to hang out. Thank you, Tommy. See you in Denver.